Tonight on the University Report, we will learn about weather spotting and dining services are looking for student chefs. Good evening and welcome to our last newscast of spring 2013. I'm Tim Arts. And I'm Zach Christensen. Here are tonight's top stories. Looking to buy some plants? The Horticulture Club is holding their spring plant sale on May 10th from noon to 6 p.m. and May 11th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The plant sale will take place at the UW Platteville Greenhouse. The University of Wisconsin Platteville wanted to inform its faculty and staff that there is a mandatory abuse reporting training session in the Platteville East Room of the Marquee Pioneer Student Center. This meeting will be from 3 p.m. until 4.30 p.m. This meeting will discuss how abuse should be treated in the work area and how it will not be tolerated on the university campus. At the American Chem Chemical Society's National Conference, the University of Wisconsin Platteville's Alchemist Club was recognized with an honorable mention. The conference had taken place in New Orleans, Louisiana on April 7th until April 11th. The Alchemist Club was the only chemistry club in the UW school system to have been recognized at the event. The event's theme was energy and foods. The conference had 15,000 chemists with 1,000 undergraduate chemistry students in attendance. UW Platteville's very own chemistry psychology professor, Mark Rubel, spoke in the MPSC Platteville Room about the impact that technology is having on sexual violence. The event was part of the Real Men Respect Women Students Promoting Respect campaign. Dr. Rubel spoke about his history of working with victims of sexual assault, some of whom were small children, and was speaking to spread awareness about sexual violence and how the internet has changed the face of sexual crimes. Meteorologist Jeff Kennedy from KWWL out of Waterloo, Iowa came to Platteville last Wednesday to talk about severe weather and weather spotting. Kennedy spoke at the Platteville Fire Department. The weather spotting training session was held to inform people for the upcoming severe weather season and what to do when they see severe weather in the area. Jeff Kennedy was asked about Wisconsin weather and advancement in technology. In Wisconsin, we have some of the best weather anywhere in the world. We get a tremendous range in weather, anywhere from winter storms and blizzards, which can be life-threatening. Uh, we're kind of moving out of that season right now, however, so our thoughts are more toward the uh, classical severe thunderstorms, large hail, dangerous lightning, flash floods, and of course, tornadoes. Um, the wonderful thing that I think is uh, so prevalent now is everybody is able to pay really close attention to the weather. And when I say that, I mean we have all these different ways uh, to see what's going on with the weather. Everybody has a smartphone. We can see the radar right on our smartphone, anywhere, anytime. Everybody has a laptop computer or a tablet or some way to see uh, if there's a tornado watch or a tornado warning or a flash flood, any kind of severe weather. Um, it, it used to be kind of a chore to get people to actually know about that and to disseminate the information. Now, uh, it's almost all automatic, and as soon as the button is pushed at the National Weather Service office, that data goes flying all over the place. So people are um, able to get weather information much more easily now than we could say even 10 years, 15 years ago. So uh, from the safety standpoint, uh, my job is to help people be safe when it comes to the weather. Over a dozen professors are coaching Science Olympics teams at Platteville Middle School. The coaches help the students with lab work, give them written tests, and help them work on small engineering projects. They also teach them more complex scientific concepts and make sure they know the rules of the competition. All of the coaches see this as a great opportunity to generate interest in science and engineering in young minds. The middle school team won sixth place in the statewide competition on March 17th. This week on campus, we celebrated the 50th birthday anniversary of Wilgus Hall. The celebration was on Monday, April 29th from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. The residents held games, pinatas, a t-shirt raffle, cupcakes, and reminisced about the marvelous history of what we know as Wilgus Hall. Everyone was open to attend this event, and if you were a former Wilgus Hall resident, you also got to join in on the fun raffles. And we'll be right back after a short break with more University Report.
something about being. Biology students helped restore the Gooseberry Pond this past week. The pond is located on a farm between Belmont and Darlington and has served as a watering hole for cattle for 60 years. But when the Kleibstein family who owns the farm decided to convert the land into the Gooseberry Pond, Nature Preserve, the pond posed a problem. The students' main goal was to reduce the amount of algae in the pond because it caused the pond to be toxic to animals. For more information, contact Rebecca Doyle Morin at doylemorinr at uwplatt.edu. The Pioneer Crossing in the Marquee Pioneer Student Center is now accepting student chef applications for the fall 2013 semester. Applicants can expect to help with all food prep during lunch and dinner hours as well as preparation for catering events on campus. The Crossing is looking to hire eight applicants, so stop by and grab your application today. The University of wisconsin Platteville Farmhouse Fraternity won the Junior Community Spirit Award for its outstanding community service from the Platteville Area Chamber of Commerce. During the Chamber's 50th annual gala, Farmhouse is dedicated to the building of men through community service. Types of community service include helping with Platteville Dairy Days, adopt a park, and adopt a highway. The Midwest Culturally Inclusive Conference was held Tuesday, April 30th from 11.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m in the University North Room in the Marquee Pioneer Student Center. A raffle for five free registrations, books from the keynote speakers, brochures, and early registration opportunity, as well as light snacks and refreshments highlighted the day. UW Platteville won this year's Recycle Mania competition. Recycle Mania is an eight week long competition created for university recycling programs to promote waste reduction and recycling on campus. Amy Seabroth, UW, or UWP's Stability Coordinator, implemented many new ways to make sure students, faculty, and staff recycle properly. Dining Services also took part in the protection by helping reduce food waste on campus. Want to volunteer next year? For more information, contact Amy Seabroth at seabrotha at uwplatt.edu. The PACCE Poster Day was held on Wednesday, April 24th in Alsvik Hall. The event was held for students who recycled or who received funding from the PACCE class products to put their work on display. Poster Day is a day for students to show off their work on large posters and incorporate descriptions and photos of what their projects entail. To view them online, log on to www.uwplatt.edu slash PACCE. On April 12th, UW Platteville students in physical education and those minoring in special education had the opportunity to visit the Wisconsin Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired, located in Janesville, Wisconsin. Timothy Swenson, a uh, health and physical education professor, coordinated the trip in conjunction with Dr. Rhea Kirk, a special education professor, and her students. Dr. Kirk was asked about what kind of experiences they had during their visit. And then when we got to the School for the Blind and Visually Impaired in Janesville, we were blindfolded and had to make sandwiches without being able to see. We used white cane and we had to navigate the surroundings and find objects in the room. We tried um, braille machines to learn how to write braille and use other accommodations that are commonly used there. One of the things that really struck me, oh, we also did um, FIED activities such as parachute activities with the students there at the school. And the thing that, that stuck with me, and I think will stick with me for a long, long time, is I was talking with one of the students and I asked her how she liked being at the School for the Blind and Visually Impaired and compared to going to her regular school. And she said she liked it better at this residential placement because nobody teases her there and everyone there understands what it's like to be different. Educational Honor Society hosts their annual Spring Book Fair. All proceeds go towards funding their biannual trip to Convocation, an international education conference. This coming October, 
The book fair is Monday through Friday this week from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Wisconsin Room Marquee Pioneer Student Center. All books are buy one, get one free. For more information, visit bookfair.scholastic.com. The UW Platteville Veterans Club is holding a day-long seminar on combat post-traumatic stress disorder this Saturday in the Velzy Commons of Ellswick Hall. The seminar will feature presentations by veterans who are suffering from PTSD and discussions with campus counselors on the effects and symptoms caused by the disorder. The event will also feature a lunch with a panel of veterans that will answer questions. The deadline for registration ended on Tuesday, April 30th, but you may contact Tim Long at longti at uwplatt.edu. UW Platteville ranks the highest among the UW system's four-year campuses in student participation in the emergency text alert system, according to a recent report released by the Wisconsin Center for Investiga Investigative Journalism. UW Platteville has nearly 100% of those enrolled participating. UW Platteville was the first school in the UW systems in which students are automatically registered for the text notification called Pioneer Alerts. This past week in Ellswick Hall on the first floor, posters were on display of UW Platteville veterans. The posters were located directly across from the Noor Gallery. The posters will be available throughout the week. For more information, contact the UW Platteville Veterans Club. And when we come back on the University Report, I will have my interview with former Pioneer defensive back Ryan McWethy. If I ride, I will know the way the trees smell after the rain. Hi, welcome back to the University Report. I'm Zach Christian. Joining us today is former UW Platteville defensive back Ryan McWethy. Ryan, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing? Not too bad. So, first question for you today is: Is what was your playing or your experience like here playing? Um, I mean, it was a great time. Uh, I'm really glad I came here. Uh, I like the coaching staff. Uh, every everything about this was a good choice for me. I'm I'm really solid that uh, I came here and had a good time. And uh, off that, what what were some of your highlights you had playing here at, at UW Platteville? Um, probably just last year in general. Uh, all of my senior year, we turned around uh, the football program. So we went from uh, I'm not really sure what the record was, but a and two season uh, is real nice last year. So uh, hopefully we just our class turned around the program and keeps the football program up in the top of the WIAC. Yeah, and especially the past two seasons, you guys had, had really good years, solid years, right. competed with Whitewater very well. Right. Um, and then now at practice, there were some NFL scouts there to look at you. What yeah. was that like? Was there any added pressure? Um, I mean, there's a little added pressure, yeah, but you still try to keep your cool. I mean, you're just out there practicing, uh, doing what you do every day. So. Um, but obviously there's still going to be a little bit extra pressure. And, and off that, what teams talked to you during practice while you were here at UWP? Um, there's uh, quite a few scouts that came through. Uh, just to top off my head, uh, Dallas came through. Um, the Ravens came through. Um, Titans came. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a couple teams that came through. And uh, since the past semester, you were training for the NFL draft. Uh, how did you train for your pro day, and, and what did you do to, to get ready? Um, I actually took the semester off, and I went to uh, Waukesha, and I trained at a facility out in Waukesha. Um, they've had some good success there. They've had some NFL athletes coming out, so uh, I figured that was the best option for me. Um, and, yeah, I went, we went out there and trained till the pro day. And speaking of your pro day, you, you did have to go to the UW-Madison pro day for, for the Wisconsin Badgers. Right. Uh, all athletes that are in the state of Wisconsin have to go to that pro day. What was it like training against Division I athletes? And did you feel like you fit in, or, or did you have something to prove? Um, definitely had something to prove, yeah. Uh, but it is different. I mean, you're not a D1 athlete. It almost feels like they're looking down on you. But uh, once you get in there and start competing, it's, I mean, they're the same thing. Um, Maybe we're all athletes, we're all doing the same thing, so um, after the first couple of drills, it, it wasn't too bad. 
And, and what was the draft day experience like for you, or draft weekend, I should say? What were you doing? Were you with your family? Were you with your yeah. friends? I was with my family all weekend. My friends came and watched the draft, um, watched just about every pick of the draft, and uh, um, yeah, just celebrated with my family and friends afterwards. And then that night when Cleveland called you, how did you receive that phone call, and, and what was it like to hear from an NFL team that was very interested in you? Um, I was actually talking with my agent and uh, trying to figure things out, and then he got a call from the Browns. He's like, hold on, I'll call you back. And about three or four minutes later, he's like, all right, I got you a job in Cleveland. You're going to Cleveland. And um, obviously, I just got real excited about that. And then also, um, when did you realize that you were an NFL prospect? Like when teams started coming to practice or when did anybody tell you that teams were looking at you or how did you first figure that out? Uh, it was after my junior year. Um, the defense coordinator asked about uh, if I could have some game films and uh, I was just kind of curious. All right, so what are these games, game films for? And uh, he's like, oh, just NFL teams. And at the time, I was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. But then it became a reality. Scouts started coming in and whatnot. So, so after my junior year. All right, and how excited are you to be going to Cleveland? And you're going to get an opportunity in yeah. training camp, definitely, because they need a lot of help in their defensive backfield. Mm -hmm. How excited are you to go there and you get to see players that you've probably watched on TV, you've yeah. seen before? How excited are you for that? Just ecstatic. I mean. There's no, there's no feeling that you can actually describe. I mean, ever since I was a child, I wanted to play in the NFL, and it's basically a dream come true. So, just ecstatic. I mean, there's, there's yeah. no other words right, for it. Is yeah, there? Right. And uh, well, we want to thank you here on the University Report for coming in and spending some time with you. And we, of course, wish you all the best of luck. That was former UW Platteville defensive back Ryan McWethy on his draft day and what his career like was here on at UW Platteville. And when we come back, we'll have a look at your Entertainment Minute. Welcome back to the University Report. I'm Kaylee Dunn, and it's time to take an Entertainment Minute. The Platteville Public Library will be hosting a Block Party Junior Party where children can play together while building many imaginative creations out of Lego blocks. The party takes place on Saturday, May 18th at 1.30 p.m. Children in attendance must be three to six years old, and they must be accompanied by an adult to the event. To register, stop by the Platteville Public Library or call the library at 608-348-348. 7441, extension 3. Space is limited. The University of Wisconsin Platteville Symphony Orchestra's Spring Concert will be located inside the Broadwick Concert Hall in the Center for the Arts Building. It will be held on Friday, May 3rd at 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and will feature the winners from the concerto competition. Tickets can be bought at the University Box Office located in the lower level of Alswick Hall. Now let's take a look at what's playing at this week for the local cinemas.
UW Platteville's Department of Performing and Visual Arts, as well as the Pioneer Players, will conclude their current theater season this week with the annual One Act Festival, an evening of short plays. The production opens tonight at 7.30 p.m., followed by an evening of performances on Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. All performances will be held in the Center for the Arts Theater, located on UW Platteville's campus. Tickets are available at the University Box Office in Alsvik Hall. Thanks for tuning in for the Entertainment Minute, and now back to Zach and Tim in the studio. Hi, I'm Tim Arts with your UW Platteville weather forecast for the week. Uh, ten, tonight, uh, well, this afternoon, we're going to expect to see a little more rain. Uh, highs are going to linger around 47 degrees, and there will be a w wind out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, tonight, temperatures are going to remain fairly constant along with the rain and the wind. Uh, Saturday afternoon, more rain. Uh, the highs are going to get up to about 59. More wind out of the east at 10 to 15 miles an hour. And then Saturday evening, uh, lows will be about 50 degrees. More rain, unfortunately, and more east wind at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, looking into our extended forecast, uh, Sunday we're going to have some rain, a high of 65, low of 51. And then the rest of the week, uh, the sun comes back along with some warmer temperatures. We'll see 70 degree temperatures Monday through Wednesday, uh, dipping down a little bit back into the 60s in the later part of the week. And now we go to Zach with question of the week. And yes, it is time for question of the week. This week we asked students how they are dealing with end of the semester stress. How I deal with end of semester stress is through golfing and doing outdoor activities while enjoying beverages. I deal with my end of the semester stress by not really studying or doing my homework. I deal with end of the semester stress by hanging out with friends and playing basketball. How I'm dealing with end of semester stress is balancing homework and social time. I handle end of the semester stress by studying periodically and I've also been hanging out with friends and playing volleyball and getting some energy out and whatnot so I have less energy and I'm able to study better. Well, how about those answers? Yeah, I mean, Tim, how do you deal with, with post-semester stress? Uh, end of the semester stress, I should say. Well, I mean, typically, I guess, I don't know, I've never really been too stressed out at the end of semesters. I know everyone kind of gets all uptight about final exams and all that, and I've just never really let it get to me all that hard. I mean, I, I guess sometimes I exercise and I'll try to just, you know, keep social with friends. I mean, don't want to be stuck with my nose in a book all day. <laughs> and I'm the exact same way. But that'll do it for us here on the University Report. I'm Zach Christensen. And I'm Tim Arts. Have a good rest of the semester.